All right, put your coffee down because I don't want you to spit it out. <laughs> the reparations <laughs> debate, and these numbers are big. At least 21 cities and counties across America are considering a reparations program. Evanston, Illinois already has established one. It's costing taxpayers $10 million. Now, one Texas Democrat is taking it a step farther. Congresswoman Jasmine Crockett is suggesting that all black people should be exempt from paying all taxes as a form of reparations. Here it is. One of the things that they propose is black folk not have to pay taxes for a certain amount of time, because then again, that puts money back in your pocket. And that's one of the reasons that, you know, we argue the reparations make sense because so many black folk, not only do you owe for the labor that was stolen and killed and all the other things. And so it's like, if you, if you do the no tax thing, for people that are already, say, struggling and aren't really paying taxes in the first place, it doesn't really exactly. All right, we've just been jazz explained. Well, I the, 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 the economic debate about reparations has been going on for quite a while now. It started out in California, now it's more national. Right. I will tell you, I was looking at two different studies from two different professors, one at Duke, one at Harvard. The estimated range of what it would cost on a national basis to pay reparations is anywhere from 10 to 19 trillion dollars. Wait a minute. How much trillion. is our debt? We are sitting on 28 trillion dollars as a nation in debt right More now. More than half of money the debt. Money to Ukraine. Money. Yes, that's that's what the overall cost would be if, if some of these discussions and proposals came to fruition. Look, slavery was America's original sin. I agree with Mitch McConnell on that, but we can't afford this right now. There are other ways that we can find we could find if we so do choose so as a nation to give out reparations, but this is not the way. Financial payments is not the way, and more tax issues. And Marie, it's not the yeah. way. Yeah, <clears throat> excuse me. So I think that when we look, for example, at Evanston's program, it was very, very narrowly tailored to uh, help with housing inequality, right? So it did things like tax credits and some payments to help address long-term segregation in housing. That's a very narrowly tailored reparations bill. And they did studies What about poor white and, people? And voters, what do they get? And voters supported that. But voters overwhelmingly supported it. I think what I would actually prefer to reparations is to fix some of our longstanding problems that still exist in how we do federal government programs that are unequal, not just with race, but with class and with with yeah, with, with, economy. with economy, a whole number of things. But some of these programs are tailored narrowly and I think can be beneficial to communities. Do you think black people shouldn't play taxes? I think everyone should pay taxes. Okay, okay. A high tide raises, rises all boats. No, a high mm. tide raises all boats. That's the point. That's what Donald Trump figured out, and that's how he lowered black unemployment to the lowest it's been in 50 years. I, I just don't think black people need blue-haired liberals to rescue mm. us. Mm. Um, I, I think we're hardworking people. Um, you know, a lot of us didn't have it easy. Uh, but a lot of us are willing to do the work every single day. And we can. And we've been doing the work. The number one small businesses in the country is black women. Mm. Um, and so I think what would behoove, as Emily may say, the liberals to do is to <laughs> remove some of the barriers that are blocking the progress of black Americans. They prefer the teachers union when it comes to education. They prefer more regulation when it comes to our businesses. So imagine... Your ancestors going through slavery, you finally get something, you get a business, start putting money back in the community, and then the government wants to take 60% of that. Mm. You wouldn't need reparations if you fixed that. And, and the high tide would help everybody. That's We're right. in this together. It's one country. That's right. Look, I don't, I don't think anyone should pay taxes under this administration because we're not getting our money's worth, right? We're not safe. We're not, nothing's happening, but not on the basis of skin color. And I kid, just kidding, IRS. Uh, oh, yeah. Well, <laughs> we don't want them to come April 15th. April 15th. All right. Well, Which car are we going to take, girl? I got you. Hey, everyone. I'm Emily Campagno. Catch me and my co-hosts, Harris Faulkner and Kaylee McEnany, on Outnumbered every weekday at 12 p.m. Eastern. Or set your DVR. Also, don't forget to subscribe to the Fox News YouTube page for daily highlights.